Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on vectoring in Illustrator. This time rather than talking about a specific tool, I'm going to walk you through how to vector a pony's body. If I tried to vector the entire thing, it would take a little bit too long for a short video. So to begin with, I'm going to take a screenshot that I have, which is right here in my screenshots folder. I'm just going to drag it down to my AI icon and drop it. As you can see, I have, now have it perfectly sized. I don't have to change anything. And I'm just going to lock that layer so I don't accidentally move it. Now the first thing I'm going to do after that is click this to create a new layer. And I'm going to name it Applejack. This is where I'm going to put everything for Applejack. That way if I wanted to vector anything else like rarity or some of the objects from the foreground or background, I can have a separate layer for them. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my swatches. Let's see. Since I need to recolor them, I'll go with Apple Chance colors. And I'm going to click this to import them. And then I need something that contrasts very well with her color, so I'm going to go with Twilight again. Let's close each one of these. Alright, so the first layer that I'm going to do is going to be the front leg and back leg. So I'm just going to create a sub layer. I'm going to name it right legs. I try to always go by the orientation of the, pon of the pony. So these will be their left legs, these will be the right legs, rather, rather than doing it the way that we're facing. So I'm going to switch my pen tool with the P key. And I'm going to go with Twilight's Mighty Stroke color here. I'm going to switch over to this and let's start with her back hoof. Okay, I'm just going to start up here. Oops. I accidentally have this set to the fill color. Um, just going to hold down shift and hit X and that's going to switch it over to the stroke color. And now I have an actual stroke. Now if you watched my first video, Ponies in Illustrator, you know that I used six points for most of these, le for most of their legs. Well, I found a slightly better way to do it that involves fewer points. And, oops. Because I clicked off, I had to restart the path right there. Okay. Okay, I don't have it quite lined up yet. So, right there. And I'm just going to bring it all the way up. And click. Now, as you know, I, as you can see, I have a little bit of orange on either side, which is fine. I'm just going to take him up in width a little bit, and that looks right. I don't want to cover up all of the orange because of the way rasters work, which this PNG file is a raster file. Okay, I'm just going to name this her back leg. Raster files have what is called bleed, and the colors bleed over into other pixels since they're of a particular shape. Whereas a vector in Illustrator doesn't do this, as you can easily see. Now then, time to go get this very oddly shaped front leg. Let's see. I think about here would work. I encourage experimentation when working with vectors because sometimes my method isn't the perfect one. Or you may try to follow my method but not really understand it until you've actually played around with the tools available. Now, because of the odd shape right here, I'm not going to actually try to recreate it. I'm just going to get a very general shape out of it because I think the curve looks a little bit better than having that odd angle there. Okay, and I'm just going to name this front leg. Now then, I'm going to switch over to my fill color and then I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to go back to my swatches and I'm going to change to the body stroke color. 
I'm going to hit X and I'm going to switch back to my fill color and then I'm going to choose her body fill color. Oops. Her dark body fill colors. And there we go. I'm just going to hide this layer so I can see what I'm doing next. Okay. Now then, let's see. My next lowest layer, which is where I like to start, is going to be her belly stroke with, actually, sorry, her back leg, then her belly and neck stroke, and then her flank, and then this leg here. So I'm going to create a new layer, or a new sub-layer rather. I'm going to name this, um, let's go with body. And I'm going to turn off my color with the slash key next to the shift key. Switch back to the body color for the stroke, and there we go. Now this one, um, it's not going to be a closed path. I'm just going to start right here. Stroke. The back legs you can actually get done in five points rather than about seven or eight. Okay. If you notice early on, I didn't actually resize the screenshot that I dropped in here. I don't really like to do that because it just adds a, an extra step to something that I don't really need to do. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the neck and belly. Instead, I like to vector it the way uh, I like to vector it from the original resolution and then blow up the vector. It saves me a little bit of time and effort. So looks good. Okay. And then one last point. And simple. Okay, so this is the back leg. This is the belly. Next up is going to be the flank. Good, but I've got a little bit too much of a corner right here, so I just need to adjust the anchor point a little bit. And there we go. Now then, that's going to be the flank. It's a little too much. There we go. And this is going to be her front leg. And that will complete this sub-layer, for the most part. I'll go back and add the fills after this leg is done. And there we go. Simple as that. just going to take all these, select them, and then I'm going to change the stroke color back to Applejack's normal color, switch over to the fill color, and choose the body fill color. I'm going to turn off this layer so the, there we go. So now I can see everywhere that the fill isn't covering, which is just right down here, and that this isn't quite as rounded as I like. There we go. going to turn off the, oop, still had that selected. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the stroke and I'm just going to make a very quick shape. Right there. And I'm going to drag this down to the bottom of this sub-layer and now I have that covered. Let's see. Okay, now it's time to taper these strokes. I want to add a point here
let's see. This should not. Okay, uh, I'm going to take the belly and I'm just going to move it above the flank stroke. There we go. Now I can see all of the belly stroke. I'm going to add a point, uh, let's say about here. And then I'm going to add one here and one here. I switched to the width tool with the Shift W shortcut. I'm going to command click on this one point so I only have it selected. I'm going to adjust the handle just a little bit so it's pointing more down into the leg. And I'm going to double click and hit zero. I'm just going to hit the tab button to preview it. And it looks good, so there we go. Now, because of the glitch with the width tool, that actually changed uh, a lot of the width of the stroke along this length. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to adjust the anchor point widths. That's all two. That's two. This is going to go a little bit above two in here. I can add a point about in the center, right, yeah, right there, and drop it to two. You don't want to add too many of these, or you're going to wind up with bumps in the line, and they will be noticeable if you do it wrong. And in fact, I can notice this, so I'm going to just leave that out and leave it at what it was. Time for the belly. Okay, I'm just going to adjust the widths on these. Okay, and this entire end of the stroke is at two. Okay, I switch back and deselect. Then there you go. Okay, now. One last thing to taper on the body. Right. This one is not at two anymore, so I just changed that. very subjective whether you think it looks good or not and this looks close enough to me to where trying to adjust the width anymore is just going to be a practice of futility. So, then I've done that I'm going to turn back on this and I'm going to turn off the body so that I can see what I'm doing. Now then, I've only got three parts left to go which is this side of the head, the muzzle and her ear. So I'm just going to create a new layer, or sub-layer, and I'm going to name this head. Now, my ear is generally the uppermost sub-layer in a character. And since I'm not going to go over how mains work and such as that, uh, this tutorial, um, I'm just going to stop with that there. Generally this and this will be their own layer, and the tail will be the bottommost layer. Okay. I'm going to... Switch back to Twilight's colors once more for contrast and turn off the fill. So switch to the head layer and one quick stroke. Generally this part is thinner than all the other body strokes. Sometimes I like to change the width a little bit, but not often. Boy, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Hmm. Looks like it starts about right there, and then I want a point here. Hmm. Let's try it here and see if I can get the shape right. The fewer the points, the better. Hmm. I don't like that. It's too flat down here, and this up just a little too much. So I'm going to pull this backward just a little bit. Okay. 
That looks decent enough. All right, now I'm going to restart the path here. I'm going to hold down the control key and change that to a sharp point. Another one here, and again, switch it to sharp. And last one. Now this is still set at one, so I need to change it to two point. Don't like the curve on this quite yet. Yeah, that looks much better. I'm going to add an extra point here for the width tool later. And that looks good. I'm just going to select both of these. Oops. Actually, I can just click that and switch back to my swatches. And change it over to the body stroke color. take this one and I'm going to add a fill to it. That gives me a fill here. Now sometimes this can cause a bit of a problem and you'll have to actually trace out the shape of the fill that you want on a separate or as a separate object from this. Mostly because it'll overlap with the eyes at times. So always be mindful of your layering. This is ready for the width tool, so I'm just going to switch over to that. Sometimes it's good to vary the width on the muzzle. Generally, I like to keep it about the same. Where I sketching, I might change it up a little bit to reflect the size differences at different points of the muzzle, but as a vector, I prefer to keep it as close to um, the same size as possible. Vectoring is a perfectionist art when it comes to ponies, generally. Okay. All right, the only thing left for this part is the nostril. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these colors. So I'm going to take the stroke color and I'm going to move it here. I can either click this tool or I can switch them with the shift X keys. And I'm going to switch back to this and I'm going to turn off the color completely. Now, to do the proper a proper nostril, you have to make two points like this. I'm going to take and I'll make this a sharp point and click back to this, make it a sharp point and then I'm going to join the pass. Now for some reason Illustrator doesn't like giving you that second handle so you kinda have to click and drag. Not quite the shape I need yet so I have to fiddle with it a little bit. Looks more like a fingernail now. I want it just a little bit thicker. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to turn this back on, and there we have it, nostril. Nostril should only take about a minute to, to do. Now, I'm going to switch back to this, and I'm going to go over her ear now. The ear is generally very simple, it just takes a little bit of practice with. In fact, with a little bit of practice, you can do these from scratch. Ponies do not have sharp ear points. Unless it's a custom character, never have a sharp point up here. It's not quite lining up like I want it to. And the more I move or twist it, the more of a flat edge I'm going to have, and I despise flat edges. Ponies are all, or nearly all, curves. If I 
might just have this one all by itself. Hmm. Just going to tweak the shape just a little bit. It's not going to be a perfect trace. Let's see if adding a midpoint gets the shape where I want it. That looks much better. A midpoint is a midpoint because you add it between two points. Never try to save yourself time by going from here to here, then to here, and then here. Because it's just going to look awkward. I'm going to add a couple of extra points in here for the tapering. And I'm going to switch over to creating the inner stroke, which actually, that's the Photoshop method. Let me show you the Illustrator method. Just two points. I'm going to click back on this so I have these tools up here. And with Profile 1, which is tapered at both points. And the stroke needs to be a little bit thicker than that. Let's bump it up to two. Let's take and move it just a little bit. And I'm going to switch back to my direct select tool and I'm going to change the angle on it. And deselect. There we go. Now, let's go back to swatches. I'm going to change the color of that to this. And that one as well. And I can add in the body color there. Oops. It's time for the width tool now. Again, command click and then double click. Command click on the point and double click. And there it is. Okay. Now to just get all the anchor points down to what they should be rather than what the width tool wants them to be. Okay, I'll... Okay. Now then. Let's turn on the entirety of the vector. Hmm. Still got a little bit to work on. So I'm going to switch back to my pen tool. I'm going to turn off the stroke because now I'm working with fills only. Okay. Because of the way the main is uh, layered, I'm going to go back to the body and I'm just going to add in one more fill here. So I'm going to start up here, and bring it down there, and I'm just going to create a quick shape. I just need to make sure I don't cause a layering issue, or a fill error. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to put it down to the very bottom. Oops. Uh, down to the very bottom. Okay, so this is the leg fill, and the one I just worked on is the body fill. Okay. Now, I still got the head fill to work on, so I'm going to come back up here to the head. I'm going to highlight it in the layers menu, and because the eye is going to be right there, I'm just going to very quickly trace this out. This is actually going to be a closed path, so I don't have to worry about the fill going outside of that. Okay, and the head is actually layered beneath this lower portion of her mane, so I can just use it as a little bit of extra room. Okay, then I'm just going to drop it down here. I'm going to name this head fill. I still haven't named these two, so I'm going to name this head stroke and muzzle.
and that is how you vector the body of a pony. Very quick, very simple. Um, there are some slightly more complicated ponies out there, but I will not be getting into them. Um, you'll just have to use the skills that you've hopefully accrued by watching the majority of my tutorials, or bugging me on DeviantArt, or in the comments section below. Um, I will go over how to do cutie marks in a separate video. Um, the mains will be probably up next. And I'm going to try to pick a main that isn't quite as simple as Applejacks, which is just... Oh, come on. There we go. Which is just one quick stroke here. A couple quick ones in here. A small path for this, and then another stroke here and here. Same things up here. Okay. I will be linking this vector as soon as it's completed in the description below. And... Hopefully you can use the vector file to learn something or another from what I've done. Thank you for joining me for this video, and have a great night.